Many probability problems are confusing and unintuitive. This is because the answer to these problems change based on how the problem is presented and can even have wildly different answers, all correct, due to surprising ambiguity. This produces the unintuitive field of paradoxical probability, where the way a problem is presented produces wildly different results. The paradoxical part is a misnomer though, because no paradox is actually present in these problems. Let's go over an example, the Monty Hall problem. The first way I present this problem is the way many people present it, and it's misleading. In a game show, you, the contestant, are presented with three doors. Behind one door is a car, and behind the other two doors are goats. Your task is to select the door with the car behind it. First, you pick a door, then a door you did not pick is opened to reveal a goat. You are now given the opportunity to switch your answer. What is the probability of getting the car if you switch your answer? Most of us answer this with the following reasoning that there's a 1 in 2 chance of getting the car if you switch because there's two doors and only one has a car behind it and it thus does not matter if you switch or not. The person presenting this problem to you then answers with glee that you are incorrect and that the real probability is 2 in 3. We simple folk are naturally surprised at this. The explanation for such a different answer is this that there is a 2 in 3 chance of picking a goat door the first time, and that the other goat door is removed, and then when you switch, you can only switch to the car door, so... Since the only event was the first door you picked, there's a 2 in 3 chance of getting the car door in the end. This answer is still a little confusing, but it's true. In fact, both answers are correct. This is because the problem was presented in an ambiguous fashion. The key line is this. What is the probability of getting the car if you switch your answer? This is ambiguous because there are multiple reasonable reasons you might switch your answer. Let's go over the two answers that we gave a little more closely. The simple folk way goes like this. You first pick a door and a goat door is revealed to you. You then stand there and think of whether to switch or not. You decide there's a 1 in 2 chance of getting the car door if you switch, so you flip a coin in your head and you decide to switch. Since not switching was just as likely as switching in this scenario, there are two outcomes, getting the car door or the goat door, and thus the probability of getting the car door if you switch is indeed 1 in 2. Let's go over the other way. You first pick a door, and a goat door is revealed to you. You then switch your answer. Notice that no decision was made about switching or not. Switching was a given. Thus, the only outcome of interest is the initial door you picked, which has a 2 in 3 chance of getting a goat door, in which case, when the other goat door is revealed to you, you automatically switch to the remaining door, which is the car door. Each answer is just as reasonable as the other, so both answers are correct. The original way the problem was presented was ambiguous and allowed different answers. So what's a better way to present the problem? Perhaps if we change the phrase, what's the probability of getting the car door if you switch your answer to, should you switch your answer? It will remove the ambiguity, and the correct answer is to switch because it increases your chances of getting a car. Here are four reasons probability problems can become surprisingly confusing. Probability is dependent on what is known, not how it actually is. Probability is dependent on what actions are done and how they are done. Probability is dependent on what decisions were made and how they were made. 
probability is dependent on the way the problem is presented. Consider this simple example. Five pink balls and five blue balls were added to a bag, and one is picked at random. The probability of picking a pink ball is 5 in 10. What if you knew that the blue balls were added first, and then the pink balls? You would probably guess that the likelihood of picking a pink ball is more than 5 in 10, because all the pink balls are on top. But if you shuffled the bag first, the probability sinks back to 5 in 10. Or maybe, you decided to not pick a ball at all, in which case the probability is now 0 in 10. In this example, the probability changed when you knew more information, and it changed again when you changed the way you picked a ball, and then changed again when you decided to not pick a ball at all. All of these things affect the probability of an event. Let's finish up by going over a more confusing example, the boy or girl paradox. This example will illustrate how the probability of an event changes in an unintuitive way when presented in a different, but seemingly equivalent way. Mr. Jones has two children. The older child is a girl. What is the probability that both children are girls? Clearly, the second child may be only a boy or a girl, and assuming equal likelihood of either, the probability that both children are girls is 1 in 2. Let's put the problem a little differently. Mr. Jones has two children. At least one of them is a girl. What is the probability that both children are girls? The answer to this one could be either 1 in 2 or 1 in 3, depending on how you look at it. If you knew which child, the older or the younger, was for sure the girl, then, like before, the other child is either a boy or a girl, and thus the answer is 1 in 2. But if we don't know which child is for sure the girl, then we have three outcomes that are equally likely. Either both are girls, or the older is a girl, or the younger is a girl. The cause where both are boys is not in the pool, because we know for sure one is a girl. Thus, there are three equally likely outcomes, only one has both being girls, and thus the answer is 1 in 3. When presenting or being presented with probability problems, make sure to take note of what you know, what is done, how and what decisions are made, and how the problems are presented. When you find a reasonable answer, see if there are other equally reasonable answers as well. If possible, Try out a real simulation of your problem, and see if results decently match your hypothesis.